bite. All CDs. Because I figured, right, well, this is hard work. So I'm basically sliding these underneath the, the bevel to give me some leverage. And it, it, it is not easy, but, but the actual corners are the worst. In fact, putting, it, putting pressure on the corners, I, I was very, very reluctant because it felt like I was going to break something. But basically, I'm using um, a plastic handled um, nail file, which is kind of old, and I'm wedging it between the um, CD so I don't scratch the screen. So I'm putting the, the CD, the old CD, onto the the, the uh, screen, then I'm wedging between the bevel and the screen. That way I won't scratch, damage the actual screen itself. All CDs I've got to use after all. <laughs> and I went, I had to go around and uh, I couldn't get the corners up at all at first, so I had to pull up the middle parts. And sorry about the light, it's really, really bad in here. But I haven't got any, it's still early morning, it's kind of dark. So, I'm, I need a break. <laughs> I'm halfway there. I've, most of it's loose. I think it's just about to come off, actually. <sighs> well, it's once you get once you get the hard part off, I think the rest of it should be shouldn't be so difficult. Now I haven't actually pulled this panel yet, but uh, let's see. Do it with one hand. I haven't actually put pull up this corner yet. I've got to do it with my fingers. Uh, uh, how do work? They don't want you to repair stuff, obviously. Um, right, can I get this CDs in the way? It's all DVD or whatever. Uh, I'll just back up discs so there's nothing important on them. Uh, see if I can, well, I'm going to have to put the phone down, because I can't do this in one hand, impossible. Okay, come off. I'm inside. And uh, I've yet to pull the plug on there. I had to turn it, um... I had to turn the monitor upside down once the bevel came off. I literally had to turn the whole thing on its face so that I can see all the connections and everything. And as you can see, down in this corner, let me just put this, you can see that's where the front control the interface is. And there's some plugs to unplug. Well, I don't even know if I need to unplug those actually because I'm working on the power supply which is in this box here. So basically, I think all I've got to do is put that, and then I can get the power supply bar down, which is in that metal case. Got the uh, plug unplugged from the top, or the back panel, and now I've got to go around and disconnect the cables from the front display, which is under that tape. So. Yeah, uh, it's, another, it's another two handed job though, <laughs> but there's loads of YouTube videos showing how to um, get into your monitors, so it looks like it wants a bit of cleaning as well. Uh. <laughs> well, we're getting there. <sighs> yeah, it's another fiddly job. I have to squeeze these clips on each side and then gently pull until we get the clip out. There's one unclipped. Ah, now the other one. Tips, isn't it? Actually, there's no clip there, but it's taped on, so you've got to pull that right back. And Looks like this, yeah, the side cover here comes straight off, so I'll just stick that over here, out of the way, move it around, hang on, so we've got some more plugs here to remove, uh, uh, 
I used to repair hi fi's and TVs and videos back in the 90s. And, well, modern technology, it's just so much more fragile. You know, years ago, it's just tricky getting my fingers in here because of this clip. Some of these, oh, it's actually slithering around a bit, so maybe I can just lift this whole lot up. Yeah, the whole lot comes up. So if I just put my fingernail, which I broke my nail the other day, put my fingernail on there, put, put the wires between my fingers and then put my finger on that clip, I should have to pull this off. I should be able to. Uh, maybe I should just pull the wire around the top, press the clip. Mm. There we go. It's just a bit tight. And I'll do the other one. I don't usually do tutorial videos, but I looked on YouTube and there wasn't any YouTube videos specifically for my monitor with a video. There were there was some other stuff, but Alright, that's another one. We just press that little clip on the top with your fingernail. Okay, there we go. Alright. Now, have we got it all? Uh, well, yeah, there's, I unplugged this from the back panel, but it's still clipped on, which it's still held by some tape. Now, I can, I can leave the tape in position and just try to remove this other plug, which would probably be the best one. I don't know if there's a clip on there. Yes, there is, underneath. Underneath, there's a clip. You've got to squeeze underneath. Squeeze with the, foot, with the finger nearest the monitor. If I can hold it, there we go, it's a bit tight. Right, so I've got that one off. I'll leave the tape in position to hold the cable so I know where it goes. Now we go around the, uh, it looks like everything should just lift out now. Yeah, oh, there's one more cable ah, down here. Okay, it's hiding underneath here. That's tricky because this one runs all the way around here. So, can I get to this one? No, it goes inside. So I'm probably going to have to unclip this one here. Well, this torch is much better. <laughs> now I've got new batteries in it. So I'm going to have to undo this tape. So leave one end in place so you know where the tape is. Yeah, it's uh, modern technology, it's just not, it's just not reliable like the old stuff used to be. You, you could easily get 10 years out of TVs, CRT TVs, years ago, but now you're lucky to get five. Okay, that's all uncoupled. Now I just have to get this clip off here. I'm looking at it, I'm not sure exactly if there's a clip there or not. I think it's just a pull one. No, there's something I've got to squeeze somewhere. Yeah, there's some clips on each end. Well, the whole board just came out of the slot, so that's made it easier. Right, okay, I'll put the tweezers on the clip like that and squeeze and pull the plug and it came out easily. So that's the way to do it. Get some tweezers, strong ones, not the flimsy little tweezers ones. Oh, no, no, pliers. And just gently squeeze the clips on each side. There we go. And it come out quite easily. So actually this board, it's actually the center board. It's the infrared center that turns the money on and off. I'm actually going to clean this board in isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any um, dirt because there's a lot of muck down here, as you can see. And the sensor was acting up a little bit as well, so I'm going to clean that. And the inside reflector is very, very dirty, so I'm going to clean that with a cotton bud. And this, this surface down here is where the infrared light passes through, and that needs cleaning. I might not use isopropyl alcohol for that though, I might just use some uh, ordinary water, soapy water, just to clean that with a cotton bud. Okay, now I can remove the entire power supply unit. Uh, 
the whole thing just lifts away now, so now I'm take it off to my other desk to get this back panel off now, which shouldn't be a problem because it looks to me like it's just clipped in there. Looks like there's um it's held by this point somewhere on the other side. Well, there might be some screws somewhere, we'll find out. Never done one of these particular monitors before. I used to do CRTs all the time. But the technology has just got so small now. Uh, it looks like actually there's some clips on here. That's probably what it is. I need to release these clips and it should all come off. Anyway, I can't do this one hand. Yeah, um, I released the clips on this end and this black panel has come loose now. Ah, it's falling off. There we are. Right, okay. Yeah, that's good. I have a little... I'll give it a bit of a hard twist first and then... Right, that's another one. That's uh, two so far. I'll twist to get it loose. about magnetic screwdrivers. Okay, I've got all four uh, screws. I think that's all of them. Now hopefully this board should lift up. I've checked capacitors to make sure there's no power left in them, which are the main ones that are down here. You've got to make sure you, um, and you can see them on the end, the big ones down here. Those are the ones to watch out for. Anyway, I, did, I checked them. There's like 0 0.01 volt in them, so I don't think there's any danger there. Just make sure it's not plugged in, obviously. <laughs> like, it's kind of difficult when you've got any bits like this anyway. But, um, yeah, the whole thing is going to lift up. But there's a cable down here which has got to be disconnected to plug the socket, which I'm going to do as soon as I get this loose. But I have to pause the video while I do that, unfortunately. In two hands. Right, I've turned the board upside down. The cable's still attached. I just rotated it and it's absolutely chock a block with muck and dust in here. Well, it's not surprising, really. But these capacitors down here, they're all marked with a full black lines and they've all burst by the looks of it. All of them. They appear to be bent, bent in because they're all bulging. So there we go. Those are the ones that need replacing. I've already altered some replacements. So we should have enough capacitors to replace those. And it doesn't look it doesn't look like there's any other kind of damage. No, there's nothing burnt or anything. There's just those capacitors, and uh, that's what I predicted it would be, because that's the most common problem, and I did hear them venting, actually, and they're definitely bulging, definitely. So, yeah, they've got domes on top, I thought the fans were I'm going to have to get my light in the right angle. I'll get my, there we go, you can see the, the dome. You can see the domes effect on, them, on the capacitors there. Some of them are worse than others. This one at the front is really bad. This one here. It's, uh, yeah, <coughs> definitely those. So we've basically got to replace all of those. And I looked at the schematic already. And here we go, the schematic. Uh, I my glass. I don't even know if I can take the capacitors out because I can see from the schematic that they are actually 470 microfarad, 1000 microfarad, 1000 microfarad, and 1000 microfarad. So there's actually 1, 2, 3, 1000 microfarads to replace, 470 microfarads to replace, possibly Another one, which is the one I was pointing out, which isn't done, but I'll, I'll probably replace that as well. So that's a schematic, so I don't actually have to uh, look at the capacitors themselves to know that those are the ones that won't be placing. 
Right. I was looking fiddly, but I managed to get the plug undone. Now this board is loose now, so I'm going to uh, find somebody to put this. Uh, yeah, I'm just one more solder iron up, and I'm going to pop these out and put the new ones in. We're getting 24.4. 24.2. 24 it's going up a bit because I'm going to hold it with my hand. So, it's supposed to be 470, and it's 24.3, which is absolutely useless. Yeah, so, yeah. That, upside down again. Yeah, that is obviously the main fault, is this one, because it's extremely low. So anyway, I'll put some more of those in, and I've got some more. Turn my meter off a minute. I've got some replacements here, or some T35 volt. So I'll just pop one of those in now. Right, all the capacitors soldered in. Um, the new capacitors are in. Now, just got to trim off the legs. And that one was low as well. Not as low as the rest, but it wasn't bulging, so... But anyway, I replaced it. Because uh, I had new ones, so it made sense. So I'm going to find my snips now. Just to, uh, one. Oh, that flew off somewhere. Difficult doing this with one hand. Three. Yeah, don't you love it when things don't go where you want them? All right, I've got like my fingers. If I can do that, I'll try and do that. It's not always easy. Right, I don't want I'm getting my fingers in the way, but it's very, I don't want these things flying all over the room. But it still would do. I'll put my finger on the end and then... But yeah. That's the other way to do it. Right, okay, all of them, all the bits of wire cut off from the capacitors, can you see which one is, I've circled them with red lines, so, get my magnifying glass on it, have a look, should be easy to see. Yeah, that's good by the looks of it, and then you go around with solar iron, and just to Refill the solder because when you cut the legs off, you can end up with moisture creeping in between the solder and the um, the leg of the the, um, the trimmed off leg. And it's a good idea just to refill the solder over what well, actually trim them, just so you don't get no dry dry joints in the future. Check the other two capacitors and they're fine. They're actually good. This is uh, 33 um, microfarad. Um, and actually under the diagram, let's see, that's, uh, how do you see now, uh, let's see, uh, I can see the number on it. I've got it upside down, my board. See, 103, and that's 33 microfarads, see 103, and the, um, the other one, C105 is 0 0.22 microfarads, and that, that, that was fine as well. Um, 
So those are both okay. Just leave them lean over, that's the way they were before sort of thing. But that's fine. So there was uh, three 470 microfarads at 35 volt that I had to replace. Um, three 470 microfarads at 35 volt and three 1000 microfarads at 16 volt. And they're all low ESR. They're all um, supposed to be um, working high frequency environments. So that was six actually, six all together that I replaced. Um, I think the, the the guy that did another video about this particular monitor, he must have had an older an older monitor because I've noticed that from the diagrams that he had on his, his board layout was different to mine. Um, if you look at the actual PCB layout. The, where the capacitors are, that's one I replaced, and those five here. Um, if I look at that, let's get, get his video up. Now, I'm looking at the still shots he took, and the board is obviously a different way around, because the power socket leads are up here at the top on his particular board, and the capacitors are over it. Looking at the PCB side, now I've got some mine. Now, on mine, the socket is on this side. That's the socket there. So he must have a different revision. This must be a different revision because this is where my socket is on this side. These are the capacitors marked on the board. And there is no um, socket on the top there. So there's definitely some differences here. And there's the there's a hole for this screw. So yeah, and on his difference, he's actually got a mounting hole there, and there's a hole here. I've only got one mounting hole here. So he's got a different revision because his connectors are at the top, and mine, and uh, mine are in a different place. So yeah, there's some differences. I did come across uh, another video on YouTube. Now, this guy is doing these LG Flatron W205 2TQ monitor, tear down and repair. Now, this guy's video is actually a different, it's a different monitor, but it's the same PCB as mine. Because I was looking at this video, and his board is a match from what? Is a match for mine actually. He's got, I think, the board upside down there. No, maybe not. Um, he's, he's actually, um, he's testing the capacitors on there and he's getting low values just like I was getting. Um, very low values on his capacitors test. So he's obviously got exactly the same problem. Um, so I would suggest you go and check that video out because that one seems to be closer. Uh, it seems to be a much closer uh, tutorial for this particular board. And as you can see, his his board layout is the same. He's got the same capacitor layout there, though. So his socket is on the on the left on the right hand side there, which is the same as mine. There is my, because my socket's here. Ago, I had a problem with my Panasonic VCR with power supply overheating and capacitors drying out pretty quick. What I actually did on there was put a little tiny fan in there, and it actually keeps the temperature down on the capacitors. So I thought, well, why not do the same on it? It's a tiny five volt little fan. It's uh, I'm sticking it right right in between uh, the heat sink the back of the heat sink actually because there's no room on the other side and I put a little bit of um, uh, cement and uh, it's, it's a tiny little 5 volt fan and it won't stress the circuit at all because it's only like 90 milliamps and it's going to be sucking and blowing cool air onto the capacitors and keeping them cool so they won't get stressed out so much with the heat and yeah 
I thought, well, why don't I do that on here? So I did, and uh, I put it's it's all oh, it's um it's not um it's a brushless fan. It's not a the type that interferes with the circuit. So because it's a brushless DC five volt fan, it won't actually give any um, interference to the circuit. It, it's using its own internal um, oscillator. And anyway, I've had to put it at an angle because there's not much room, and it can actually draw air in from the side. And it should help keep these caps cool. And uh, hopefully, I won't have another, I won't have the same kind of problem in another five years because I've already tested this this kind of thing out before on my uh, Panasonic VCR, and it works well. So I thought, well, there's no harm in trying it on here either. Obviously, this one over here was was okay anyway, but I replaced it all the same. But this should actually keep some air moving around in there. And it's, it's, it's at the top of the board anyway. So obviously, air right, hot air rises, and that's the bottom where the socket is for the power. And it's just going to give it a little bit of assistance with the cooling. I already checked. There's no, this is the secondary, this, this transformer. The primary is at the bottom, that's where the high voltage is. The low voltage is at the top, which is the secondary. So the fan is actually adjacent to a low voltage anyway, so it's not. It's like 20, uh, 22 volts or something. So there's no worries there with high voltage or anything, and the, the wires were nicely easy, easy to connect to 5 volt supply. There was a five volt, five volt rail underneath. There's a link under there, which I tacked the, the, the wire on, and I cemented it so that with some um, thermal cement, so the wire can come adrift. And the ground was actually at this top corner. There was a solder tab going through there up to the ground. So I, I soldered the negative onto the ground of the circuit board and run the ground wire, which is around the heatsink, which is also ground anyway. So there's no um, dangers of any uh, arcing or anything. It's all low voltage, and yeah, the little um, the ground wire, which I'm just going to chuck over the top of the this transistor here. So that's uh, yeah, all good. I might tack that in place with a bit of cement as well. So. Yeah, I'm just tapping that wire down because there was a, a speed sensor yellow wire which I cut off and I cemented it onto the top of the fan so that it doesn't float around and touch anything it shouldn't. And that's been anchored out of the way. I could have removed the yellow wire off the fan, but I didn't want to mess around soldering into the these fans are so fragile. This it's a tiny little thing, just to give you an idea. Yeah, it'd be about eighty it's eighteen millimeters across. So it's just a tiny little thing. But that should keep the, keep the temperature down. And I've already tested it for noise, because uh, the last thing I wanted to do was have a noisy monitor. <laughs> and at 5 volts, you can't even hear the bloody thing. <laughs> so now it's just a question of putting the screws back in the power supply board. Uh, I wasn't going to actually film the, this bit, but actually I don't know if I've got that in right. Yeah, we've got it. Mm. Sometimes you don't quite get in the threads properly. And my screwdriver, I upgraded it to lithium, so it's actually a lot better than it was before. There we go, we've got the power supply back. Uh, just basically putting everything back in. I cleaned it actually, it was kind of mucky and dusty. Looks a lot better now. Now we've got the black insulation plastic back on. Ah, uh, slightly working. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I think that's why this is done. <laughs> I actually 
just had to put some more tape on though, because I had to put some captain tape on there, because the original tape that was on there it lost its stickiness, it just wouldn't stay, so captain tape's good, it's heat proof. <laughs> Well, I've cleaned the, um, the infrared section at the front for the touch sensitive. That's all cleaned up now. We're almost there. Yeah. Oh, finally! Finally! Got it all back together again. Oh, I've been at this like six hours, mind you. I, I kept stopping and having cups of tea and what cups of coffee. And, and I had to wash the outside case as well. And I had to let that dry as well because I didn't want water in it. And I've just been polishing. I actually using some visible windows cleaner, crystal clear to clean the case. And uh, everything's lined up properly, which was a bit of a scare. I thought, ooh, uh, because there was no location holes on the um, power supply thing, the, the, the chassis. I had to pretty much you go by the tape marks where they were before. So I've just got to put the stand back on. <clears throat> um, so, oh, let's turn it over. It's all, uh, I've been cleaning, uh, all back together again, and I've got no gaps, no gaps around the edges. It's all snapped together. Now, if I, if I miss something out, if I forgot to put a screw or something in, I'm going to be completely F-U-C-K'd. Oh my god, I forgot to put this piece of tape in. Oh no, no, this bit of tape, it lost its stickiness, so... I, uh, well, I used a bit of captain tape instead, so... Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, so as long as you don't leave any circuit boards out and don't get to... As long as you don't have to plug everything back in, we should be alright. <laughs> Can't wait to try it now. Um, I'm squeezing around the edge when you put it back together again. You have to squeeze it all the way around and make sure that everything snaps back together again the way it was. I've already done that and uh, you can tell because there's nothing creaking. Uh, so it's all back the way it was. Now, I just could put the stand on. Actually, before I do that, I think I'll clean this stand up as well. It'll be easier. <laughs> the moment of truth, we have light. Yeah, let's see if it's working. I did see it come on briefly when I plugged it in. Yay! We have action. Everything looks normal. Looks better than normal. <laughs> yep, one money to fix. Uh, I have to go and turn my keyboard on now. And press a button. Number two. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, at last, finished. Mm. Yeah, everything's hunky dory And I can't even hear that little fan going, you know. <laughs> Remember, I put a tiny little fan in there. Oh, I can hear it. Listen. That tiny little fan that I put in is working away, keeping those capacitors cool. And it's so quiet, I don't even notice it, so that's an even better job, isn't it? The fact that I can't even hear the damn thing. Thanks for watching.